I think from now on, every time I hear you sing the song, I will preach. <laughs> uh, I thank uh, uh, Sandra for, for doing the music and playing and for Jaron to sing. And I wasn't around. Uh, I wasn't around at Clemson when you used to sing that with the Clemson Choir. But I'm glad that you were able to bring that to Greenview years later and lift it up on this particular day. Without uh, carrying on too much otherwise, uh, from the book of Acts, the 20th chapter, focusing on verse 7 through 11, I lift up these words. The 20th chapter of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, verses 7 through 11. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered to break bread, Paul spoke, one translation says spoke, another says Paul preached to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking, kept on preaching until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs rooms where they were meeting. Seated in a window, was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on, as he preached on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story window and was picked up as dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking, preaching until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. From all that I read, I want to leave this subject with you. The resurrection of youthful potential. The resurrection of youthful potential. And everybody here is still in your youth. Whatever your age is, you still got some more youthful potential left. Amen. When you stop breathing, you're no longer youthful. Does that include everybody now? This biblical text points to the need for an increased focus and a deep involvement in the life experiences of the up and coming members of our younger generation among us. And all of us are part of a younger generation because you are younger than your next year worth of living. If you are 80, you're still young because you're not 81 yet. If you're 35, you're still young because you're not 36, 37, 38. Everybody's still youthful in some way, fashion, and form. This text speaks to what transpired in Troas during the last seven days of Paul's time at that location. It was on the first day of the week that the disciples came together to break bread. The Apostle Paul, whose mission and vision statement included establishing churches in regions where Christ had not been preached was about to move on. And while gathered, he preached a farewell 
sermon to them because he was ready to depart on the next day. No doubt in my mind that once he was gone, they would have somebody preach the gospel to them on a regular basis. You know, we do what we do, and you know what? Uh, do to the best of your ability, but as soon as you quit doing it, somebody else will step in and do it as well. That's why you got to go in and take care of yourself, too. Oh, I know I'm talking to y'all. Some, somebody's working a job, and you about to knock yourself out. But you know, as soon as you stop, that's right, somebody else will come on and step in. So we do what we can, while we can, when we can, wherever we are. But you got to know that it'll keep on rolling when you have finished doing your part. That's why you got to stop and take care of yourself while you're doing it. Thank you, uh, uh, Colonel uh, Constance Perkins. That's why we got to keep our health, you know, taken care of. Yeah. Why are you doing it? Don't do it so hard till you can't go to your doctor's appointment. Stop, take time, go to your doctor's appointment. I'm all off my script. Let me get back on that. <laughs> no doubt in my mind, as soon as Paul would leave, somehow the gospel would still be preached. Because it said God never leaves himself without a witness. They would hear somebody else step up to the task and carry on. But that somebody else wouldn't necessarily proclaim it with the uniqueness of Paul's personality, his insights, and his mannerisms. The word may come forth, but, you know, it comes through the personality of the one who is doing uh, the speaking. But, you know, since Paul was the one who was there, they wanted to utilize him as best as they could while he was still around. Knowing that he was set to vacate the area when the next day arrived. He intended to communicate some memorable content before he departed. And because of the nature of the moment, he knew he was about to leave and he knew that tomorrow wouldn't promise to him, neither to them. He decided that he wanted to say some definite things before he left the next day. So while he started talking, Paul became long-winded. <laughs> And he preached without intermission until midnight. Imagine that. I don't know when it started, but he preached till midnight. You know, he, he, he had a lot of things he wanted to say. He preached till midnight. Suppose they started at 6 o'clock in the evening, sir. That means he preached for six hours without intermission. You know, he was all into it. And so were they. Nobody paid attention to anything else. They were hearing a faith-building word from one who had a dramatic conversion and calling experience on the Damascus Road. And they were focused on him and what was being said. Imagine that everybody's all into it. Nobody had paid attention to much else, especially to the time and what others were doing in church that night. Imagine being so into it till you don't look to the left and you don't look to the right. You just focus on what you're hearing. Ain't got time to look around and see what you're wearing. I'm focused on what I'm hearing. And everybody was so into it until nobody noticed anything that was going on. They must have been having fun. It said that time goes by fast when you are having fun. And you know, you know, I like to hear a good word. I believe you do too. But a long-winded sermon delivered by the most skilled orator with the right mix of storytelling with the right mix of wit, rhythm, and rhyme. 
dynamic voice and cadence changes could stretch and hold the attention of many people who love the Lord. Some folk who love you can just get all into it and just stay with it all night and all day. But regardless as to who's saying it, after a while it can't grab and hold your attention all day and all night. That's very least likely. <laughs> Such was the case with a member of the younger crowd named Eutychus. Though Paul was pouring out words of great spiritual value that spoke to the eternal souls of everybody who heard it, his words started to sound like a lullaby <laughs> to Eutychus. He tried to listen to it, but the longer he listened, his voice started to go down like this. Come on, y'all, help me preach. <laughs> and his eyes started to blink with heaviness. He tried to fight the feeling and pay attention. But the longer Paul stretched out his words into the wee hours of the night, sleep started to take over. You know, I've often wondered how Eutychus wound up in the windowsill. While Paul spoke with intensity that evening, perhaps the young man tried to sit in his seat like the elders without moving. He tried to deal with the traditional lecture and monotone style of communicating and learning. But you know, everybody doesn't have the same learning style. And everybody doesn't have the same worship style. Some may look like they're sleeping, but you are listening to every word. Some may be moving and shaking all around, and maybe that's the way you do it. But you know, it just says everybody has a different learning style. Amen. To some, loud speaking uh, might not let them hear it. So it has to be spoken a little softer. Yeah. And to some, if you speak it too soft, they'll fall off. Yeah. That's why the speaking has to be dynamic with range and drops and cadence changes. All to keep people focused and uh, all into it. You know, some require more interaction than simply sitting and listening without moving. I believe that's what happens in the classrooms, you know. Some folk believe that you're supposed to sit there and listen. If you can't sit still and think something wrong with your attention deficit uh, disorder, ADT, and if you can't sit there, somebody think we got to medicate you, so you'll sit there. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I know I'm talking. Everybody can't sit there without moving. It requires some kind of interaction. If you stop moving around, doesn't mean you bad. Doesn't mean you're not paying attention. It just means that the monotone style might not be coming fast enough for you and keeping your attention. So Eutychus became increasingly sleepy. But you know, I give him credit. I see him being creative enough to change positions on his own <laughs> so that he can remain in church, connected, and alert. He looked around and saw everybody else sitting. But you know, he had to come up with his own unique way of staying there. And he looked up and noticed the windowsill. And the windowsill offered fresh air that could be experienced in a stagnant environment. In other words, if I get up in the window, 
Maybe I'll get a, a, a whiff of a fresh air to ward off a degree of drowsiness. That tells me right now on this President's Day weekend that all of us can use a breath of fresh air every now and again. It helps us to stay alert. It helps us to stay involved and connected. So innovative Uticus is courageous enough to use a different approach in worship in order to remain alert, involved, and connected to the established ways of doing things. I see him in my mind's eye. Do you see him? He gets up in the windowsill to stay in church without raising his pinky finger <laughs> to excuse himself from the moment. You know, when things get too stuffy, some folk raise their pinky finger. When things get to the point where it uh, stops your creative expressions, you wonder where everybody went, they just raise their pinky finger because they got to be able to have a way to express themselves uh, all the time. And I'm going to jump off script again because we got to make sure that in this multi-generational church that we have, we keep people here and retain folk without stuffing, siphoning their ability to worship the Lord like they do. But that doesn't mean you got to run up and down the aisle. It just means that we make sure that we include the way you do it uh, in the way we all do it. Uh, and we can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, and we can be together all at once. Uh, one generation over there, another generation over here. But we can still worship the Lord, uh, especially when we are able to use our own uh, creative approach. But you know, once he was up here in the window seat, the cool night air helped for a while. But after a while, during this marathon, traditional worship service, fatigue started getting the best of Eutychus. And Eutychus was overcome with drowsiness till he sank down into a deep sleep. And after a while, Paul kept on preaching and everybody kept on uh, focusing. Nobody paid attention to what was happening to Eutychus up in the window. And after a while, he fell out of the church window and dropped down uh, three stories. You know, Eutychus's uh, fall out of church was a call for them to expand their focus and give deliberate attention to the Utica Society of younger folk who are in our midst and all around. I'm glad to know that while Utica fell, uh, Paul stopped preaching and he kept on going. And then somebody just happened to look around uh, and they noticed that they didn't see Utica anymore. You know, that tells me that we look around um, and we don't see the Utica society among us uh, coming back in uh, and gathering like they used to do. Um, somebody needs to stop uh, doing what we always do um, and try to go out uh, and find um, where Utica went. Um, the Bible says that Paul stopped preaching long enough, went outside to where Utica landed, uh, and there he found it. He embraced the young man, uh, fell on him, uh, and started working uh, with him. And the thing I like about what I read here, I don't know what Paul did uh, because everybody else assumed that Eutychus uh, had fallen out of church and was dead. Uh, but you know, Paul went over there, and whatever he did, uh, the Spirit of the Lord uh, worked with him in some kind of special way. Uh, you know, I don't know where the Eutychuses uh, of our lives have gone. Uh, maybe they went to the east, uh, and maybe they went to the west. Uh, but after the benediction, uh, we need to go and find um, whoever 
whatever you the cuss went to. If it's down at the bank, uh, talk to you the cuss there. If it's at the grocery store, talk to you the cuss there. If he went to a different place, uh, if she went to a different place, uh, we need to do something uh, about inviting uh, the Eutychus that we know back in church. Paul did some things with him. Uh, everybody thought it was bad. Uh, but then Paul looked around, uh, and while he was down there praying, uh, while he was down there touching him, uh, he saw signs of life uh, come back into Eutychus. Uh, and he said to the people, uh, trouble not yourself, uh, because life is still in him. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that life is still uh, in the Eutychus society. And uh, you know what? Uh, you are a part uh, of the Utica Society because you're still alive uh, and you're not as old as you can be. That means you are still young uh, and there's still uh, some life in you. Whatever it is that you do for the Lord, uh, go on and do it. Uh, whatever it is that you try to do uh, for the work of Christ, uh, go on and do it. Uh, that's the reason why we have uh, Mason come back to church, uh, we invited him to come back. It didn't mean that just because we hadn't seen him that he's dead. Uh, no, he's got a whole lot of potential uh, in his life. Uh, there's potential in you. Uh, there's potential in you. Uh, yeah, there's potential in you. Uh, and the Lord still has a reason uh, for us being here. The Bible says that after he got him up, uh, they went back uh, upstairs in the church. Uh, they ought to say, another Enough is enough. Uh, we've been here to midnight. Uh, you mean to tell me we're going to go on some more? But this time they preach some more and they talk some more. And Eutychus uh, was right there paying attention. And then Paul went on and talked uh, until the rising uh, of the sun. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm trying to get out of preaching gear and go sit down in my seat. Uh, but you know what? Uh, when we get the Eutychus, Eutychus Society, in church, we got to make sure that we are talking loud and saying something. Not talking loud and saying nothing. Let's make sure that we are addressing the issues that's important to them. Some Eutychus is concerned about economic empowerment. Yeah, and Paul already said that the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah, but you know what? The lack of money hmm, yeah, could be bad as well. That's why it says also in the word uh, that it's the Lord that give you power to obtain wealth. Uh, and I don't know how you feel about it, uh, but I want that power during inflationary times. Uh, I want that power to go forward. Uh, and then when the Lord blesses, uh, I will not forget uh, about where the power source came from. Uh, all things come from thee, O oh Lord. You know, I also wonder what happened to Eutychus? Uh, what happened after Paul left? Uh, I believe that Eutychus uh, came back in uh, and the society of Eutychus type people started coming in. And instead of just preaching all day and night, uh, they could have had a certain kind of, of niche market class. Uh, the kind that says, I'm going to help you uh, uh, with your career. You know what? Uh, we're going to teach you that you're not being trained to be the tail but the head. Uh, the Lord says I'm making you the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, if you think there's no plan for your future, to come in and tell you to cuss uh, that the Lord has a plan for you, uh, plans to prosper you, plans to bless you, plans to take you ahead. Uh, you know, I've got to get on out of this thing. Uh, I don't want to mimic Paul uh, and preach a long winded sermon. Uh, I just want you to know uh, that there's a resurrection that comes from any kind of potential that is considered to be dead. Uh, something ain't dead in you. Uh, the Lord can raise this up and on the other side of African American uh, history focus uh, the law can still raise some things up in us uh, that we can go on and write fresh chapters uh, in our history resurrection of youthful potential the invitation is extended 
The door of the church is open. Anyone like to unite with this church on this day by your Christian experience at the Kennedy baptism, whatever the case may be, the invitation is extended to you. Always room for a praise report. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide here with us henceforth now and forevermore. Amen, 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 and amen. amen. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See y'all next time I see you. Godspeed. God be with you.